So let's introduce myself and um, my name is Christine Verbeke. I'm a pharmacist by training and I'm a full professor at the KU Leuven University in Belgium, where I head the laboratory of digestion and absorption within the Translational Research Center for Gastrointestinal Disorders. My, my area of expertise is related to the bacterial colonic metabolism in humans. And what we do is to develop analytical methods to quantify the bacterial metabolism as accurately as possible. If necessary, we use tracer techniques. And then we evaluate the impact of this metabolism on host health. And for that purpose, we modulate the metabolism with dietary interventions and see if that can influence health in this way. Personally, I'm very much interested in translation of the knowledge we obtained from in vitro and animal studies into humans. And this is, this is quite challenging as promising results obtained in rodents are often less pronounced and less spectacular in humans. And presumably this has to do with the fact that um, humans are genetically much more diverse compared to the specific strains of mice that we use in this test. And also the diet of humans is much more um, diverse and varied compared to mice that all, always get the same standardized diet. And then finally also the amounts of interventions, the amounts of dietary product that can be given to mice are often much higher than what you can do in, in humans. And that might all explain the fact that the, all the results in, in humans are, are often less spectacular, but that also indicates that we have to do those tests. We cannot just assume that what we see in rodents also happens in humans, and we need to test to what extent we can have the same things. If I think about the top priorities for the journal that I have in mind, then I think we we would like to contribute to the next step in microbiome research. So we are increasingly aware of the impact that the gut microbiota can have on our health. And a considerable part of that knowledge comes from animal studies and in vitro studies. There are human studies, but many human studies have been limited to associations between disease states and the difference in microbiota compositions. And although these studies are very interesting because they allow us to generate new hypotheses, they are not sufficient to indicate whether there's a causal relationship between the microbiota composition and the disease state, and certainly not to indicate the direction of causality. So to move the field forward, we need um, carry perform studies that are designed um, to better understand the impact of the microbiota and to evaluate to what extent the microbiota has an impact on human health and also to what extent uh, modulation of the microbiota can improve health. And so that's what we hope to um, contribute to with this journal, publishing this type of studies that really forward the field. The type of manuscripts that we are looking for can be broad. It can go from um, uh, studies that evaluate the impact of external factors like dietary compounds or drugs on the microbiota. It can be uh, mechanistic studies that evaluate how the microbiota interact with, for instance, the immune system or with the enteric nervous system or with the brain. Or it can be about implications of altered micro microbiota composition on disease states. Um, so all that kind of things is, are all very welcome. And we would also welcome uh, animal studies as long as they are relevant for understanding um, the human microbiome and its interactions. And for me, if I think on, on, on specifically the research field, field of gut microbiome, I think that the main um, challenge is in human studies, moving from that kind of associations to more causality and causal relationships and mechanistic things and understanding really what happens because it is not um, because some diseases like or disorders like obesity, for instance, are associated with an altered microbiota composition that 
I would say normalizing the microbiota will reduce the obesity. If it, if it would be that simple, I think we would have done that already. But that will not, that does not seem to work in humans. And it is that kind of things that I think that are challenging and that we need to explore and to investigate to get a step further in this, in this research and to fully understand how important the gut microbiome is for our health. I'm quite happy that Gut Microbiome is a, gut, is a gold open access journal. Um, so open access is, to my opinion, becoming the new standard in publishing research. And it is also an increasing requirement for many funding bodies. They just, you just need to publish your research in open access. And the main benefit is, of course, that your published work is freely and permanently available to anyone uh, without any restrictions but also that the copyright is retained by the authors. And so as the author, you are allowed to freely share your article and to promote also your own um, research, which nowadays is maybe is becoming a necessity in view of the, the large wealth and manuscripts and papers and journals that is available.